know, I'm hoping at this stage, even if you're new to gypsy jazz, just from learning minor swing and Sweet George Brown, those chord shapes that you can say, oh, I could play, I could follow this chart, A7, D minor 6, A7, B flat 6, G minor 6, D minor 6. And I wrote this on that chart. I just sent it out if you want to go. You don't have to play along with me. You can find it on your PDF. And then it starts all over. Two, three, four, A7. Oh, so I wrote out three note shapes for dark eyes. Okay, so this is just a study that I had written out. I actually, it's brand new. This is actually easier than the four note shapes. So again, you may need to have the chord sheet for Sweet Georgia Brown from last week, and then Minor Swing, which just had essentially two chord shapes. But what I'm saying is, just with a very limited knowledge of chord shapes, you can play through most of these songs. That's why, you know, I've been saying, stick with it, hang in there, just d keep doing it, you'll get it. Um, but in this example here, I actually passed out two variations, and one is the easy three note shapes, which I love, especially for kind of just more for speed, but also for bass line movement, which this is not really adding too much bass stuff, but um, but the bass is all on the sixth string. So anyways, uh, the four note shape would be this. I'm gonna go through this maybe a little bit quickly, but again, re refer back to those chord charts. Um, A7, fifth fret. Tab wise, five, five, six, five. That's A7 as a four note shape. And then even though the chart for dark eyes, when you look at it, it might say just D minor. Again, now you know in gypsy jazz, it's common to treat a minor chord as a minor six chord for that extra cool flavor. We already know D minor six from playing minor swing on day one. So this is D minor six. As a four note shape, I'm gonna go through the three note shape as well, and then you can choose what works best for you. Back to that A7, four note shape version here, just like again in Sweet Georgia Brown. And then B flat major six on the chart there, it might even just say B flat, but oftentimes when you see a major chord in this style, you're gonna play a major six chord. So B flat six. Don't forget in Sweet Georgia Brown, we had G six, and that was down here on the third fret. Same shape, same shape is what I'm saying. So a six string root. G six, B flat six. And I'm showing it to you now as a four note shape, but again, I'm gonna also go through the three note shapes in a second if you wanna do this with me. G minor six is just like D minor six. And just like A minor six from minor swing, so where's G at? Third fret on the sixth string. Okay, and then back up to D minor six. Again, I'm making it pretty easy. Guitar players just love to move shapes around. <laughs> and then A7. Just doing a little tremolo, and then back home, we're in the key of D minor, D minor six. So it's a 16 bar, chord sequence, it's a short song, half of what most songs are, and it's just like minor swing. Minor swing was a 16 bar progression as well in the key of A minor, okay? So it's just like minor swing, 16 bars, you just repeat it over and over. And again, so this is the general rule. I always say map out the bass on the sixth string or the fifth string. 12th fret is getting high up there, but that's okay. You know, it'd be right here, 12th. And that would be A7 as a three note shape. And again, you can refer back to Sweet Georgia Brown. Uh, I think I wrote it on E7. E7. Or, but then I also have to say what I, what I showed you all for minor swing. You could even put the fifth in the bass and then you have this shape. Now you have this, what appears to be E minor six as a three note shape. It gets kind of crazy and kind of convoluted like, or ambiguous rather, like wait, here's A7 as a three note shape. 
But what if I put the fifth in the bass and keep the sixth string root? Now it kind of looks like A minor six. I mean, sorry, now it kind of looks like E minor six. So, um, See, we have something totally new. I'm gonna have to write another variation. I like that. So that's putting E in the bass though, not A, not this. But putting a E in the, the fifth of A. If I'm assuming again that the bass player is going boom, 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 boom. You know, the bass is really playing those roots, <laughs> and especially in swing style. Root, fifth, root, fifth, a lot of root and fifth. Um, in a two feel, meaning one, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom, boom. They call it a, a, often a broken feel because you'll go boom, 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 a little bit of walking. And you can map it out so that you can play A7 here, D minor six, okay? Or A7 here as per the worksheet, D minor six. Isn't that nice? I mean, just three notes. It sounds so cool, I think this. A7, D minor six. A, A7 again, and then right here, B flat six as a three note shape. Okay, and that's the first eight bars. It would sound like this with a little bit of rhythm. One, two, three, four. flat six, G minor six, okay? And yes, this this is like the shape to know. You, you'll really, you really love, grow to love the shape if it's new for you. And again, I'm just kind of having fun with it. G minor six, back home to D minor six, A seven, and then finally back home. Right here. I like that. I went to the 12th fret. Maybe you all could try it if you have a cutaway. 12, 11, and then 12. That's a. That's an A7 three note shape. Root third flat seven. And just do that little arpeggiating like I'm doing here, just so you can really hear it. And then D minor six. Notice how, notice how similar these shapes are. <laughs> and then, so um, I'm, I think I mentioned this on the first day, I'm not using my pinky at all. I'm just using these three fingers. And then D, that's A7, D minor six, A7, and then B flat six as a three note shape could be this, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna go here. And then down to G minor six. Back to D minor six. And then that A7, or if you want the fifth in the bass, and then D minor six. And that's actually how you create some nice bass line movement, you go like this. a little bit more advanced study there walking bass lines is what I generally call that so that's but that's really fun that's what Django would do underneath you here and go boom like this and it's just mapping out some patterns connecting one chord to the next, oftentimes with a little scale pattern. So, um, but oftentimes kind of creating a little melody in the bass too. You wanna to kind of be a melodic bass player. Any questions with the chords, please do what works best for you. However, I'm gonna show you one other route which I sent out tonight, and that's, that's what I labeled La Pomp. <laughs> La Pomp, the French style, where we're gonna do four note shapes. And I actually want you to try them all and see what works best for you. Like, you know, what I'm really recommending is make sure that you can play, that make sure that you know 
your bass strings, meaning the sixth and the fifth string, because yeah. that's where you're creating the, that's where the root is. Kind of as if you're playing bar chords in a rock pop song or um, power chords. You know, if someone said, play me an A power chord, you gotta know where A is, F sharp. You know, but in this case, we're saying F sharp six. Nostalgic sound, that six degree is very neutral, but it's very sweet. Um, and then to make it minor six, this is what you do. I'm on B flat right now, but this is what you do to make it minor six. See where my pinky is on this chord? That's the third degree, so you flat it, and that's how you get this shape. Now it's a minor six chord. Major six, minor six. You've just flat your third. Everything else stays the same. So if you were to look at the theory of it, a major six equals this, one, three, five, six. Minor six, one flat three, five, six. What they have in common is the one, five, and the six. I think that's very important. We actually examined that last week when we looked at the melody to Sweet Georgia Brown, where you just flat the third here. Because um, I do think this is important to spell chords. Um, when I teach my music theory class promotion right here, which is coming up in March, if you guys wanna are interested in music theory, I'm doing an eight week class on Sundays. I highly recommend it. But um, so if, if you said, hey, what's an A7 chord? I would say A, C sharp, E, and G. Those are your, your four notes for A7. The root third, the fifth, and the flat seven. Sounds like this. A, C sharp, and yes, I was playing Pretty Woman. That's an A, that, oh, he's an E. But anyways, that's a dominant seven arpeggio or chord broken up a c sharp e flat seven is g so if we want a flat nine chord as per the worksheet where it says four note shapes la pump style we're adding in the flat nine the flat nine is a half a step higher than the eight the octave so here's a to a octave so check this out if everyone wants to do this with me a to a that would be called an eight, or otherwise known as an octave. But now check it out right here, flat nine. Ready for this? Ooh, dissonant. Oh, I love that. Great for some metal. Okay, so anyways, um, flat nine. A A7 flat nine equals this. A, C sharp, E, G, B flat. That's the flat nine, B flat. So here's the trick of that chord. If you're looking at that chord right here, it says, it says four, five, three, five in tab there. But it's, a, and I know this is new. This is it for many of you. This is a C sharp diminished seven chord. While while the band or the bass would be playing an A underneath it. Listen to it with the bass. I'm gonna wrap my thumb around. Pretty awesome. But that's a lot of work to have the thumb on for the bass. And you could just assume again that it's either implied or it's stated by the bass player and the other guitar player. So you could just do this. C sharp diminished seven. It's a nice shape once you get it. So that's our first, for many of you, that's the first substitution that you've learned. When, when you play in, well, with me at least, when you see a dominant seventh chord, in this case, A7, you can go to the third degree, C sharp in this case, and play a diminished seven chord. And I sent out a, a bonus etude with this song that takes you through this little routine. That's just a part of my Gypsy Jazz boot camp. So again, these are just arpeggios uh, going through with this substitution. But so now with this worksheet, I wouldn't worry so much about the theory. Instead, I maybe just learn the pattern. Now check it out on the A7 chord when everyone else is doing probably this. This is what I would call face value when they're just playing A7 like this. You can say, ooh, I'm gonna try out this diminished seven chord on the third degree. 
on C sharp. And then check this out. When you go to D minor six, we have this inversion of D minor six. The, the six is in the bass, the B is in the bass. And yes, that has another name, B minor seven flat five, AKA B half diminished. Again, I'm just showing you a few tricks. A lot of people don't understand why, they just do it because they learn it. But I just wanted to share with you really quickly you know, why. But it's just the same four notes as D minor six, just not starting on D, it's just starting on B. But look at the shape and listen to it. It's very tight and compact sounding. I like it, this, I'll kind of hit it aggressively here. Just these four strings right here. Okay, so on the chart though, I did not say it. I just wrote it in, but I didn't write uh, the name of it. That's actually could also be called B minor seven flat five. So you guys got it. Two three two three. This is, it's just a beautiful shape. Two on B. Two three two three. It's just a little bit of a zigzag shape. And that's again called D minor six, or some people might say, but isn't B the bass note? It is. So in that case, they might say, that, then that's B minor seven flat five. They're the same chord. Uh. So check it out. Now, just combining those two chords, listen to what you get. It's really neat. I'm gonna do it slow. C sharp dim. flat five, C sharp dim, and then here's the B flat six chord with the inversion. That's with the fifth in the bass, so it'd be second inversion. And I know that's new. Actually, it, that this shape is on the Sweet Georgia Brown slash Appel Direct worksheet. I think I wrote a la Django on it, I'm not sure. So one thing that's very special about these La Pomp voicings is that I'm only using the four inner strings. I think that makes a big deal because it has a very, again, I said it earlier, very tight and compact sound. Very throaty sounding, very mid-range. My thumb's wrapping around just to mute the sixth string. So don't let it fool you. I'm, I'm not playing this, even though that sounds pretty cool, but I'm not worrying about getting that A in the bass. I'm just touching the sixth string so it's muted. So again, I'll do it slower, C sharp. And again, on the chart it says A7 flat nine, but what I'm thinking theoretically is C sharp diminished seven. D minor six. And that's B half dim. Back to C sharp dim. B flat six up here. And then G minor six is gonna be here. Just like you did on the D minor six, but now you're on the seventh fret. So that can also be called E minor seven flat five. E minor seven, it's off the six degree, it's an inversion. And then just slide it back down to D minor six which is again, B minor seven flat five, C sharp dim, and then we're done. D minor six. to be able to get these really again I, you're gonna love it once you get these new shapes down but yes I do think I do know it's new for a lot of you so if, if you're not ready for that you might say hey I'm just gonna stick to those three note shapes okay so I just wanted to give you some options because I really do feel like this is a big part of the style how do you all feel about four note shapes not the Le Pomp, just with the root in the bass do you feel like you're getting those a good grasp on it yeah, keep, and again, keep, I love these songs that we're doing, minor swing being the most important, and then Sweet Georgia Brown, 
and then this song, but uh, get the four note shapes. But if you need to, I, sh I demonstrated this last week, just be a bass player through the song. Don't even worry, but just make sure you know where you're going and you can follow the song separately, you know, getting the shapes down. Uh, how do you all feel about three note shapes? Are those, are those easier? I hope, I hope you find them easier than the four note shapes and they should be. And I hope that you feel like, hey, this is very a legit way of playing rhythm guitar because some of the best do it. So don't, don't, don't think it's cheating or copying out. It's not, it's a great sound and it's very, it's a nice way to play rhythm guitar. Um, and then of course the Le Pump chords, these kind of fancier ones. I don't expect anybody to have these down yet, but I hope you grow to love them. Right here, 50%. Oh, sorry, get ready for your four note shapes. Map out the six string bass. A7, B flat six. Get ready for G minor six. Back to C minor six. A7. record note for note by ear or someone taught them the oral tradition there um, you know they don't learn it from online courses and stuff. <laughs> um, but well maybe they do these days of course by watching and relearning videos but uh, you know just again those those guys the the contemporary masters they just all listen to recordings and then pick pick the notes out note note by note many of them don't know the theory of it of what they're doing they just do it by ear completely and just have mastered the 12 notes and how to put them all together by doing it so much, okay? 
but they don't necessarily say, oh, that's a flat six of the A7 chord and that's a flat nine. And that's a diminished substitution trick, you know? But again, it's, it's, it's nice to analyze. For me, that's how I, I, I try to learn it and try to hear it so I understand it. Um, and that's how, of course, how I teach it is trying to, you know, put it into, into understanding terms that we can all uh, agree on. You know, I was actually watching the, them play on the recording there. Did you guys try playing long three note shapes? I mean, I, obviously you don't have to go through all of the shapes, but that's that I just wanted to show you if in case you just were watching me too, especially with those four note la pump. What we're looking for is the economy, the efficiency. Notice me, notice this, I'm really pumping those strings. <laughs> you really have to push down each, each quarter note. Can you see that? Can you see me pushing down? Because we don't want this. Actually, yeah, maybe you do, that's kind of cool. As a dynamic, you know, interest, but really we want that sharp quarter note staccato pulse, like this. Ja, 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 with a slight, and I already talked about this on minor swing day one. It doesn't hurt to to um, review. You could do, that was all quarter notes. Uh, short, 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 slight accent on two and four, the backbeat. Or you could do long, short, long, short. I like long, short, long, short at a slower tempo. So the long short, you don't lift up after each pulse. You lift up on two and you lift up on four and you make those really short. And that, that creates a natural accent. So again, long short. That's really sweet. It's really sweet on ballads when you when you start to play some nice ballads uh, later on. Long short, long short, long short, and left me crying. Long short after you've gone. No denying you feel long short, 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 short. And again. Those are the two most popular articulations. So, you know, it's not like you have to be a, you know, crazy rhythm player. You just have to be super solid <laughs> with your right hand. Your right hand is your drummer. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And again, what I often recommend, I, I, guess, I guess I'm just gonna do this really fast here, is just to put on the recording. And it might be at a pretty fast tempo. I'm gonna put it back there. Oh, that's it. Uh, so again, um, and when you, it's really cool when they back out the camera at a wide angle there, you can see them all, their hands are just locked in. You'd be surprised just these little three note shapes, how nice it sounds. And then it's just getting this little pumping action, you know, this push, 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 push. But don't, don't worry about speed right now. Just make it solid. Okay, let's get to the melody, one. One. Uh, so I pretty much wrote it kind of high up here in this 10th fret position. Why? Because to me, this is D minor. 
that's home. We're in the key of D minor. So I'm kind of thinking all my little licks and stuff might can just be extracted from that one position of this D minor on the 10th fret position. Um, and this is what I wrote out as the basic melody. I already have written out a new version of it, a fancier one that's going on Patreon, but I could also send it to you too. Uh, that's embellished, uh, the fancy melody. But I think it's always very important, as I talked about with Sweet Georgia Brown, you know, very square. Like Sweet Georgia Brown last week, I did this. And then, but no one would play it like that. I mean, just right on the beat, you know, they would go. You know, they would add some rhythm. Bum, ba-da, bum, ba-da, dum, bum. Same thing with dark eyes, but this is, it, it's just really for notation purposes. You know, you gotta do your, some listening and just the basic melody. So it starts on, first thing I had to say is that it starts on beat two. These are pickup notes. And so it goes, if you're counting off with the band, you go one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. And that's where the band would kick in right on the first full measure on the B flat note with the A7 chord. And guess what? That's a flat nine. See, that's a dark flavor we love and associate with Gypsy Jazz, this. If you just wanna do this. Against that A7 chord, you go. It's beautiful, that dark flat nine. <laughs> Da -dum, da -dum. It's just really dark. It's just, again, the upper neighbor tone. We talked about this with minor swing, where I said try to go half step above. So one, two, three, four, one. One. And I'm putting everything just right on the beat. It's very square, just right on in time. And then the melody, so that phrase repeats twice, I just wanted to say. And then it goes to the root, the D. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's the root to the, uh, the root is D, to the leading tone, which is actually the third of the A7 chord. And then it goes, Very melodic song, and uh, you see why the lyricism is it's just a favorite of Gypsy Jazzers to play. So let's play that much. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Four, one. Four, one, okay? And then now we're going into measure nine here. Those are pickup notes. And every time I say one, one is a rest. And so the pattern is one. Da, 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 da. Those are all pickup notes, kind of leading you into the next, you know, phrase, beginning of the next phrase. So now we're going up here on the 10th fret, D. And there, because that's the third of G minor playing as a bar chord here, just so that you can hear the harmony. That's the 11th fret there. Okay, so that again, the third, beautiful. The th By the way, the third degree tells you whether the chord is major or minor. Super melodic note to target. So we have this, one. 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 And that's it. There you go, that's Dark Eyes, the whole melody. 16 bars, very kind of square. <laughs> square is good to learn it that way. Then you can get into it and make it swing and fancy it up and add the little embellishments. You know, add some vibrato, add some bending. Make it come to life. I'm gonna put on a backing track and I'm just gonna play the melody. And we're not gonna do too much more for this song 
tonight just to, we got the chords we got multiple ways to play chords we have the melody and i said hit the flat nine now you know it's a half step above the root and you want that really dark gypsy jazz flavor you go you know then if you want a super melodic flavor you target the third makes it feel more resolved. But the thirds, especially on minor chords, the thirds are super melodic. Um, all those beautiful melodies, like this. Of course, the, we're, the term that I, I always use is the, the chord quality. On a minor chord, it's your flat third. On a major chord, it's your major third. Okay, so yeah, that's why again, I'm also saying with these songs, Grab a piece of paper and say D minor, D, F, A. <laughs> you know, those are your three uh, triad notes. You can even go so far as to label the sixth degree, D, F, A, B. Remember this, the sixth degree is always a whole step above the fifth, whether it's major or minor six. I already demonstrated that with the chord shape, the sixth degree does not change. It's always a whole step. That makes a really great lick that you can always do that fits both chords. That's minor. Major, it doesn't matter. I did the same exact lick. I just resolved it differently. Minor, minor third. Major, major third. But you can still kind of uh, play the other stuff the same, the five and the six. Uh, let's do the backing track thing. I recommend that you just go for it, play with the backing track, and then get the melody down. And I like the, these these ones are great on YouTube because you can see where you, where the chord is too. So the one I'm doing right now is uh, uh, the exact. It says Dark Eyes, 220 BPM. That's pretty fast, re really fast. And then uh, I'm gonna slow it down. And it has uh, th guitar. The it says GI guitar improvisation three four one one.
there I'm just adding in some octaves for some color. But I was just goofing around, always keeping the melody in mind, in my head, just having some fun connecting it. And that's how I like to improvise around this. It doesn't need to be blazing licks all the time. It can be very melodic and rhythmic. fun. This song is a beautiful song to work on. So, and it's simple. I mean, simple, relative, one, four chords, 16 bars. It's not like it's going to take you a week to memorize it. You're going to have it memorized. Well, hey, thank you so much. Um, next week, we're going to go back to some, just like a swing tune. And I think we're going to do Sweet Sue. You all know that one? Every star above knows what I love. Sweet Sue. Django, again, loved to play those early American swing tunes, and that was one of them. He was very influenced by Louis Armstrong, Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, all of those. He was listening pretty heavily to those guys. So a lot of what Django was playing and listening to was, you know, Gershwin and all the great early songwriters, the great American songwriters. So uh, we'll just have some fun. But, you know, what's important is that you could do it on your instrument. So again, what I encourage you to do is to strike a D7 chord. And then play the D, go up half step, and then run your dim 7 arpeggio. And, and now I'm, use, I'm demonstrating by going diagonal, if you want to check out my diagonal method. Django used that quite a bit. And so that, that has become a big part of my studies for Gypsy Jazz for guitar players especially, this diagonal method of going up all six strings pretty fast, uh, just by thinking that root, flat five, root. So the the whole method of the, the, now I'm talking about the diagonal series for playing a dim seven arpeggio, the diagonal series is, is or the diagonal method is just to, the preliminary method is just to do this, root, flat five, root, flat five, root, flat five. And then add, this is a dim seven arpeggio. And then you add on the minor third. But I go through, as you already have seen some of my worksheets, I also say work on your minor six. That's one, flat three, five, six. One, flat three, five, six. And this ties into some of these um, diagonal arpeggio methods. And now I'm just demonstrating my G minor six. Then I went to G dim seven. Then on the, et cetera. I'm not gonna go there because right now I'm kind of playing the song in my head and that you guys aren't necessarily referencing, but I was playing Swing Jeton. Swing Jeton was a song that I was thinking. But again, what, what I would recommend, and I want you to take it through various songs. Again, that's why I'm passing out so many songs because these to me are, are a good level and they're all kind of, the, you can see these particular relationships. But even if you just focus on the, on the, the, the main, you know, bunch, minor swing, dark eyes. Um, I, I like swing to Tom in there, but minor swing, dark eyes, bossa dorado. We'll get to that next week. Just like a handful of simple swing and gypsy jazz songs. That's a great place to start to get these uh, ideas. Then you can apply it to Noto Swing, Swing Chaton. Then, oh, of course, the minor blues or Swing 48. Those, that's another, uh, the G minor blues. Diagonal method, because I like to go through that a little bit with you, and especially more of these substitution concepts. Mm. Uh, minor Swing, easier patio method. 
where we did this. Then I said right here, diminish it. And that was for the E7. So a, a kind of a neat thing that you'll discover is, oh, if I'm on the four chord, as in minor swing, D minor is a four of A minor, I could just diminish it. So you end up playing D minor six first. If everybody could do this with me, please play D minor six. Just one octave. The one octave method is what I call the easy arpeggios because we're not blazing through the all six strings or three octaves. It's just one octave. And yes, definitely be able to have mastery over one octave arpeggios. And I'm not even going to the octave, I'm just going to the six. And that's over D minor. Here we go. And that was face value. But now when the chord goes to E7, the dominant chord, the five of A minor, that's when you diminish it. So you'll hear me say this quite often. I say diminish it. So from D minor six, diminish it. One note changes. This is what I was saying. The five goes to the flat five. And that's for the E7. There's that little chromatic lick. See, I went. That's so cool about the diminish is that you can always kind of throw in and make it a little bit slippery. Da 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 da. And then slide your hand up three frets because that's the beauty of the dim. And that's all over E7. But in my in my mind, I'm thinking D dim seven because we were just on the four chord, D minor. E7. And then I resolved it to A minor by doing our little classic. The, you know, just a half step neighbor tone, lower neighbor. D minor. E7. D dim. A minor. I'm going to do a blues lick. D minor. Diminish it. A minor. I'm going to do the lower neighbor. Mona Lisa. D minor. D dim. A minor. Blues. And again, that blues is, it, it's a feel good thing. The, it feels good to resolve it to a blues lick. That's what I'm saying. That was A minor blues. You know, so um, please feel free to start to throw in those blues licks. I'm going to talk more about that as well today because that's a big part of the, the flavor. Django played blues licks quite a bit. Just listen to his blue drag solo and um, he gets pretty bluesy. So, but we'll define that a little bit more. What does that mean? Get bluesy, <laughs> you know? Uh, but does anybody have questions on, again, the DIM 7 application, at least on minor swing? Um, there's different ways to think about it. Now I passed out another worksheet. I believe I did last week. You'll have to uh, correct me if I didn't. Dark eyes, okay? If we're starting, and this is another method here, and we can put on the backing track to try this. But dark eyes, as you all, I think, know, I hope that this is one of the classics you really know and memorize. And of course, we're in the key of D minor, but the five, it starts on the five chord, A7. So if it starts on the five chord, A7, and we are in the key of D minor, the trick is we're in D minor, starts on the five, go down a half step below the root, D, which is C sharp, and then focus on that note. I'm gonna play it here lower, and here's C sharp dim. <laughs> And I just did um, one, and this is not necessarily the easier page. I'm just doing diagonal here. And then when it goes to D minor, D minor six. Okay. And I have these on that diag, the, the dark eyes, Gypsy Jazz Bootcamp uh, diagonal study. But it kind of starts off a lot more simp simple than that. It just does this. And then root 
these are just kind of the preliminary exercises I always like to work with my students on. But right now I'm just demonstrating the full arpeggio. C sharp dim. Do it twice. This is kind of still the easy arpeggio, just one octave. And then face value, D minor six. So again, to me, a nice way to think about it is just to go a half step below the root, which is D minor is the root, the one, and then the five is right here, C sharp. And that's a nice way to visualize. So there I did a little fancy or a page of C sharp dim. This is actually on my A2 number one, D minor six. So I'm just going right up the arpeggio for both of those. But I'm substituting. You see A7, you think C sharp dim, that's off the three. But when you look at it to in comparison to the D minor, it's just a half step below. So that way it leads nicely. Here it is with chords. C sharp dim. D minor six. C sharp dim. B flat six. This is dark eyes. G minor six. D minor six. Guess what I'm gonna do here for the A7. Yep, C sharp dim. But I could even go E dim. D minor six. So again, that's that's the beauty of the dim seven is that it kind of gives you it gives you a lot of flexibility because you could be anywhere, well, kind of within the, within the three fret span, and you're that close to playing your dim seven lick or your dim seven arpeggio, for that matter. Matter whether it's C sharp, whether it's E, G, B flat. Okay, you get the idea, and then resolve it to D minor. Uh, so I think right now I'd love to just to try that out with you guys. Put on the backing track and play Dark Eyes, go back to the, the classic here, um, before we head into the, the newer stuff. I've got a lot. Uh, I, I'll demonstrate the easy arpeggio method next, but let's do this first since we're on this topic. I mean, it's the same idea, okay? Just I, I, the concepts are the same. I mean, that's the thing I'm trying to get. The concepts are the same, but for like playing wise, I'm I'm kind of separating the easy arpeggio method from the um, diagonal method, which the diagonal method is kind of geared toward uh, going through the fretboard across, like ideally through a few octaves. Again, I won't worry about demonstrating that right now, but. So see where we're at, G minor six to D minor. And by the way, let's go ahead and since you're gonna see B flat, let's play B flat six, okay? That's a major chord, B flat six. Okay, ready? Here we go to the top. C sharp dim, I'm gonna yell it out. Ready, resolve, D minor six. Okay, so that's step one, C sharp dim. D minor six. If you're doing the easy arpeggio method, you would go to C sharp dim up here. D minor six. Sounds exactly the same, just an octave higher, but it's kind of a fingering issue. So that's the that's to me the difference is this diagonal method of playing D minor six. So again, for me, by saying the diagonal method, it's kind of a very guitaristic approach because it's vis how, we how we're visualizing these arpeggios. But if you want to stick to the easy arpeggio method, that's great. Please master it. So either will work, okay? Um, but that's the first step, C-sharp dim. D minor six. to the C-sharp dim for the A7 coming up right here. By the way, that could have also be E dim seven or G dim seven or B flat dim seven, okay? It could be either, it's the same four notes. 
but I'm just kind of, you know, staying with one particular concept. And then on the B flat here, play B flat six. And if you don't know B flat six, here it is with me. One, three, five, six. Sounds like a little rockabilly. Okay, that's a B flat major six. Face value, just right on B flat. You could just do a triad if you wanted to keep it even a little bit more simple. And then, so here we go. That's just gonna come up right here just to demonstrate it. B flat six. G minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. See right there on that A seven and resolve D minor. Easier pitch he is. C sharp dim. Just say it to yourself. B flat six. G minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. D minor six. C sharp dim. D minor six. C sharp dim. B flat six. G minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. D minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. B flat six. D minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. C sharp dim. D minor six. Again, C sharp dim. G minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. D minor blues. C sharp dim. D minor. That's a six. C sharp dim. B flat six. G minor six. D minor six. C sharp dim. D minor. major. I'm going to do just a triad. G minor 6. D minor 6. C sharp dim. D minor blues. Now I'm kind of just having some fun with it. B flat. G minor six. D minor. C sharp dim. And 
embellishments. Embellishments. D minor. Here's that A7 right here. This. B flat. G minor right here. D minor. C sharp down. D minor blues. Diminish. D minor. And again, now I'm just starting to mix and match these concepts we've been talking about, the triads, the embellishments, along with the easy arpeggios, and the dim seven sub. I didn't do any tritone sub, but I'll throw it in right here. D minor six, right here. A seven. D minor. Blues. Tritone sub. Blues, embellishments, tritone sub, ending link, I'll do that again, and tritone sub lick. I'm gonna stop it right there on that A7. I did our, uh, the thing we did from the first session. Go half step above the A major triad and just do this. So again, to me, what's important that you wanna take note of is like, ooh, I really gotta know my A major triad everywhere. Visualize it and then you can do that half step uh, above neighbor, which creates that epic flavor. This. The really dark flavor that, that we really love, and that's very gypsy jazz sounding. Or just maybe simpler. So I'm just doing that um, chromatic above and chromatic below any of those notes on the A7 chord, specifically A major triad, this. Half step above, half step below. And that's that a la Django lick, I call it this. And it's just a lick now, A7, one, two, three, four. Then I ended on a D minor six arpeggio face value, just to give the listener so that they know where I'm at on the song. So all I did there was A, C sharp, E, A. That's not all I did, but I, then I embellished around those notes, this. I'm gonna have to write that one out. It's just another quick lick, you know, just to work and get down as a, as a two bar phrase. A little slower, D minor. I'll do it with you guys. Here we go. And that was just a D minor six. I actually went, I went a little, an octave and a half. D minor. You can do whatever D minor resolution lick you want to do, but something simple like that. Again, doesn't have to be fancy, just that. Just that little um, one octave. But hang on that six, really embrace that six degree. Don't be afraid of the six, the natural six. 
And also last week we talked about adding chromatic. Five, sharp five, six, this. Django did that. But again, do you have to play all six strings? Absolutely not. You could just keep it very simple. Maybe I often like to write my etudes out, as many of you have seen, just on the top four strings, as if I'm playing the ukulele. And that's a lot of music, you know? Um, Um, here's a D harmonic minor scale. This is pretty much the parent scale. Okay, go for it. Leslie. <laughs> oh, oh, the D harmonic minor is uh, D. D, F, D. sharp. Oh, 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 so D harmonic minor, D, E, F. Oh, F. One, two, flat three. G, G the four. We need the five. A. We need a flat six. B flat. There's your B flat, see? And then the we need a major seven, regular seven. There's our, our leading tones, C sharp back to D. So it makes that gypsy. Yeah, beautiful. That, like you just said, that's a big, big part of the gypsy jazz sound. Just the D harmonic minor scale. And I'm just playing the chords, the dark eyes, rubato. And then end on a D minor six. There we go. See, that brings out a lighter flavor specific to the D minor chord. Even though we're in the harmonic minor scale, that's kind of shifting modes for that moment. Yeah, sure or colors. You don't have to think modes, but it's going to major six. So you're not, you know, you're on the resolve. You're, you're doing this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the B flats really create that tension in the D harmonic minor scale. It especially works great on the A7 chord and on the G minor chord and on the B flat chord. But once you arrive to that home chord D minor, that's where I like to have a B natural. And that gives you that six degree. And that's again what most rhythm players. Just go ahead and even playing end that, end, the six. Can end it on a B natural? And that, with yeah, that chord. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. Everything else harmonic minor. So A7, B flat, right? Any of those notes. All harmonic minor does B flat major. G minor is still D harmonic minor. Let's see the harmonic minor. And this is where we just want to really bathe in that harmonic minor flavor. Yes. And then back to D minor. You can stay in the harmonic minor, or you could add the sixth degree on there. And then the B flat for the harmonic minor. And then here on the final chord, D minor six. There we go, see? That's beautiful. And then one, two, three, four, one. Nice. And then we're off into the tune, exactly. We'll learn the melody together in a second here. But that's kind of the quick analysis. Okay. So let me show you the chords real fast, why that works. D, F, A, D minor. It's just right there. Uh, G, B flat, D, G minor. These are just triads, the foundation. I'm not even gonna worry about the six and the colors, you know, the added note except for the dominant chord. A, C sharp, E, and then G, that's A7. So again, this is just extracting the chord structures from the harmonic minor scale, the harm, you know. 
So B flat, D, F, and then I can add a G or an A for that matter if I want to stay in the harmonic minor. So, but I'm just going to call that B flat. So on the chart, you'll have to just see those triads. They kind of let you decide if you want to add on a sixth degree or not, which I think is nice. It's just a basic, but I often tell students that, hey, I like to play D minor six, G minor six, B flat six. I like to play those as six chords, and A7 is obviously A7, because that's the real five. So we have the five, we got the one, we got the four, the minor four, and we got the flat six major. And that's dark eyes again in a nutshell. We have the one, four, the five, and the flat six. Yeah, go ahead. That's a, just a quick analysis of it again. I always love to a analyze the song. I think it's so important to know, hey, I could just play one scale through the whole song. Right. I can just play one scale through this whole song and not have to do anything yeah. else. And that's Harp what really brought me to you in the first place. It's like, to oh. my brain to analyze, to be able to look at it and go, what well, makes sense for happening. me to do and exactly. why? Well, good. I'm, I'm glad because, the yeah, because, and again, you have to look at the big pictures often. Even though I was just saying on that D minor chord when it resolves, yeah. I like to do D personally, D melodic minor or D Dorian. Both of those two scales have the major six degree, the B natural. So I gravitate toward those. Dorian obviously is a mode of the major scale. Or I like to think melodic minor because that also has that major six. So that's why, again, I, I was saying at the beginning of the class that harmonic minor, melodic minor, whole tone, and then your major scales. That's like the vocabulary for these songs. And music, I mean, Western music in general. Nice, we all have that harmonic minor. Let's do it. Together, harmonic minor scale. Start on D, Do, Re, Me, Fa, So, Le, So, T, Do. Good, yeah. I'm thinking of it in solfege num letters, syllables. Yeah. Such a pretty scale. Again, just stay within that scale and just noodle around. You can stay on one string. I'm going to start on D here. Check it out. Just, I'm doing this. The length of the string. I love this. Now just have, you can just noodle around and you can go below C sharp. I'm just going to play freely here. You guys can just noodle around the harmonic minor. Yeah. Lean on that flat six. Da -da. Or a major six if you want that color. <laughs> but for now, let's stay within the harmonic minor scale. Yeah. See, yeah. Da -da. Beautiful. Yeah. And on that final chord, maybe try adding the six on, like I was saying. B natural. And that's where, again, know your D minor six arpeggio. Know this. Let's try that again, just kind of, of a rubato intro to a song. You'll hear this quite often in the Gypsy Jazz if you go to YouTube and you click on, you know, the greats. You'll hear them do this. And they'll just blaze through the harmonic minor scale, arpeggios, and then and then keep going, harmonic minor. Yeah, so go ahead and just kind of freely, and then back, yeah, more harmonic minor. Still on the harmonic minor. Yeah, D harmonic minor. D minor six, you're still playing D harmonic minor. Beautiful, just make it super lyrical. And then A7, you're still doing D harmonic minor. And then on the resolve, play D minor six arpeggio. Which is this. There you go. Yeah. So again, minor six arpeggios are crucial. And then you'll hear somebody go one, two, a one, two, three, four, one. And then you're off into the melody usually at a pretty blazing tempo. <laughs> but we'll take it slow today. Let's go ahead and look at the melody now. G 
again. C sharp in D minor 6. That's face value, E dim, B flat, triad, D minor 6, D minor, embellishment, G dim, D minor. Hey everyone, welcome to Gypsy Jazz Boot Camp. It's Dark Eyes A2 number 1. Welcome to Gypsy Jazz Boot Camp. Today is Dark Eyes. I always consider this second to minor swing as importance of knowing how to improvise on it. So this etude number one today covers a lot of arpeggios and it's definitely intermediate advanced, you know, of course, depending on the tempo that you take it at too. We'll take it nice and slow at first. I'm gonna break it down for you. Today is just a breakdown lesson. I'll demonstrate how I may be um, thinking about the arpeggios, uh, some substitutions, the embellishments, and hopefully you can get the idea of it and start to practice it here with me. I've got my loop pedal here. I'm actually going to loop it, the progression first. So let's just do that. Um, I'm just going to probably use three note shapes. I mean, we'll see what I do here. Uh, here's the loop. One, two, a one, two, three, four. pretty good. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, study here. Uh, we start off with the um, C sharp diminished seven arpeggio. And that's over the A7. So of course, that's the diminished substitution trick. On the A7 chord, you can think C sharp dim, E dim, G dim, B flat dim. They're all the same. I'm hoping you understand that. If not, please review the diminished substitution uh, bonus videos and anything that's diminished seven substitution related because I want you to understand this concept. But again, I'm just going to go over the A2 versus too much theory. We have an A7 chord and I'm playing C sharp, dim seven, just note for note. Okay. However, there are pickup notes into that where I'm going and that's very common type of phrasing, very Django. Uh, you want to do some pickup notes, specifically on beat four, and triplets are very nice. You can do chromatic. In this case, I'm doing kind of an uh, ornamentation around the root of D. The lead is into the C sharp, okay? So here's the first uh, two bars, essentially. One, two, three. right on beat four there. Again, really what this is, is a great diminished seven study staying in one position. It's not the diagonal diminished seven, this. That's different, okay? So here, I'm just staying in this position, C sharp. Dim. And again, this is part of the substitution of the chord. Uh, check out my comping, the La Pump style, where I'm using diminished subs on the A7. Okay, so now the next measure three here, we're on a D minor six. And that's just a D minor six arpeggio. So again, that's just what I would call face value. Uh, we'll talk more about some substitutions in a second. So, so far we have this. Okay, and I'm just kind of putting a quarter note on beat four each time just to make a transition. This isn't necessarily the most musical phrasing. It's just to get you thinking arpeggios and arpeggio substitutions. Okay, so now we're on the next A7, okay, measure five here. And now I'm on E diminished seven. So again, th those are the same four notes as C sharp dim, just starting on E, same shape. I'm not trying to be too fancy here. <laughs> Do that slowly here, seventh fret. I'm alternating my picking. And then right on beat one for the B flat six chord, I'm doing this 
triad embellishment. It's actually probably the, my first embellishment that I usually show the lower neighbor tone. Sometimes I do this, but in this case, I'm just starting a half step below. If you see my older videos on this concept, it's I call it the appel indirect lick or the Django appel direct lick um, from this song. Okay, that's his little lick there. Just that lower neighbor tone, chromatic neighbor. So here's B flat triad. I'm just going to half step below. I'm actually going all the way up to the third. So here's B flat. That's just a triad, but we're starting a half step below. Notice a little bit more swing there. I'm going to... And there's a G minor six arpeggio. Here's G minor. Okay, so if you need to work out these minor six arpeggios, this is the perfect study for you. Um, but notice there's also a little bit of lead in a little pickup notes again, and that was on the and of three, right? We left off on that B flat six here, and then I went um, one, two, three. And again, those little pickup notes just add some momentum, forward motion to your solo, so it doesn't sound so choppy like you're right on beat one every time. One, so you, this is stuff to practice, meaning this one, two, three. Um, that's how it practices counting one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Get those pickup notes. Take those arpeggios in little fragments to where you can get it flowing in time, okay? Don't try to tackle the whole arpeggio if this is new for you. And of course, there I started on the high, on the sixth degree. Here's G minor. Sometimes I start on the fifth string. You want to be able to go both direction. You want to, ideally when you're soloing, you don't want to be limited to always starting on the root. <laughs> so in this case, I'm starting on the high note. You even want to be able to start in the middle somewhere on the third or fourth string. I find a lot of my students, they kind of have to go back to the root all the time. So the reason why I'm writing these etudes out is to um, get familiar with the shapes so that you can start anywhere. Okay, so we have that G minor six. was a D minor, then from that G minor 6, I went into this D minor embellishment. I call that enclosure. Getting us to the G here. That G is a flat 7 of A. We're on A7, the last four measures of the song. And there I went up G diminished 7 arpeggio, just like normal, like we did on C sharp. And we did it on E, but here it is on G. And notice the arpeggio sequence there. You'll hear me use that quite a bit. It's very beautiful. Uh, so again, here's that G diminished seven arpeggio ascending on the A7 chord. D minor lick here on the resolve, I just did a triad, then a little scale fragment, major seven enclosure, okay? And there in that case, I am not alternating my picking, I'm actually sweeping. So if that technique is new for you, you can hold the chord shape, uh, sweep picking, but you want to go in consecutive downstrokes. In this case, I'm holding a D minor, you know, like I'm playing stairway. The trick is you want to get it so it doesn't sound like just a chord ringing. You want to isolate each note individually. So you have to kind of roll your finger. And then I ended right on a D. And then A to number two picks up there. Okay, so earlier I looped that progression. Um, I didn't really count off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and push play first, and then I'll jump in and do this A2 D. Okay, here we go from the top. C sharp dim, D minor six, E dim, B flat 
embellishment. G minor 6. D minor, embellishment. G dim, pattern. Again, C sharp dim. D minor 6. E dim. B flat embellishment. G minor 6. D minor. G dim. Again. D minor 6. E dim. B flat. Lower neighbor. Pick up notes. G minor 6. Embellishments. Closure. G dim. From the top, C sharp dim, D minor 6, E dim, B flat, lower neighbor, G minor 6, D minor 6. G dim. From the top, C sharp dim. D minor 6, diminished coming up, sequence, triad, embellishment, top. Hello Gypsy Jazzers, welcome to Dark Eyes Etude number two. Um, I'm gonna start off by just looping the progression nice and slow. You know, be sure that you always know the chords that you're playing over, okay? Don't just try to blindly memorize the leads. Always be familiar with the chord progression. So we're gonna go through that first. I'm just gonna loop it nice and slow, maybe at about 100. You know, that's moderately slow, easy swing. Uh, then we're going to break down the etude, note for note, and then we'll play it back at that tempo. And then maybe at the um, platinum level, I'll have quicker play-alongs practice um, for this particular etude. But again, I always suggest learning it very slowly, and then you can increase the tempo um, once you get it down. I always say get the flow down, you know, these licks, and understand the concepts, and that's why you're here for this. So let's go ahead and clear the loop from the previous loop. And just for the sake of, you know, consistency with the chords, I'm just gonna do three note shapes and I'm gonna stay on the six string root. That requires a little bit of movement, but it's, it's once you get this kind of three note shape method down, it's pretty easy to play rhythm guitar over all of these songs. So I'm just gonna keep a nice quarter note pulse. Dark eyes, here we go. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, A7. Ahead, B flat six, G minor six, D minor six. Okay, always know where you're going. The bass, A seven. We're almost done. D minor six. Ready? One, two, three, four, one. And that's the loop. I'm looking here at the A two above. Where is it there? <laughs> A7, B flat 6, I'll play along. etude number two. Um, that was probably about 110, I'd have to guess. 
you guys can check it out and, and see what it's at and let me know. Um, okay, so let's break down the etude here. This one's got a little bit more variety than etude number one, first off, okay? There's not as, it's not just as clean cut as far as just all eighth notes go or anything. This, this one's got, some, you're gonna have to count a little bit. So here we go, the first phrase, I kind of break it down into phrases. The first phrase is this, it starts on beat four. One, two, three. Okay, always get those pickup notes. That was on beat four, triple it one. Okay, those are your pickup notes. One, two, three. Let's do that again. A one, two, three. Okay, notice the motif, I'm sliding that down. I think I took this from Django. <laughs> I can't remember. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. Okay, and then, then we're gonna continue this triplet slur. So if that's new for you, I'm only hitting the first note and I'm slurring the other two. Slurring meaning hammer and a pull off. Okay, make sure you get your work out your fingering. I'm, do, I'm doing this. Okay. You could just do a la Django. Do what works best for you. You know, I always say that. So I do that. And then I want to get us to beat one. By the way, that part of it, starts on beat two, there's a rest on one. So it's one. And I would just practice that. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. And just get us to that D note here, okay? One, two, three, four, one. So, so far from the beginning, just from the, with the pickup notes at the top into that D note there, let's get that far. One, two, three. Mm. Let's do that lower. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. Okay, and every time I go, mm, that's where the rest is. Okay, you can say rest. It's nice to know where those rests are. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. One, two, a one. Two, three. Mm. Mm. Okay. Good. Now let's start on that D minor six. This one's tricky to start the arpeggio on the second string. And that's a D minor triad. Getting us to the sixth degree. I'm actually thinking of it as a B minor seven flat five. Okay, B minor seven flat five equals D minor six. Okay, you already saw that in A2 number one if you've worked on that, which I highly recommend you do that one first. Uh, let's get that arpeggio down. That's right on beat one, so it's going to sound like this. Okay, three, four. us to the A7 chord, but let's not worry about that. Let's get that far, okay, from the top. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. Okay, did you get that? Let's try it again. A one, two, three. Okay, let's go on. I'm gonna walk you through this whole solo today. Now let's go and we are on the beat four. Again, just like the entrance to the solo, triplet. And that's now gonna be this. Just like the beginning of the solo on this A7 chord, it's basically an A7 flat nine. And that is really kind of right out of the Django uh, vocabulary that <laughs> right there. Uh, right out of like minor swing. Okay, so that's on beat four. One, two, three, A7. Okay, that's a diminished seven arpeggio off the of A7. Okay. Um, and then we have a rest on beat four, and then now the triplet again, but it starts on beat one on the B flat six. 
and that's right off the shape. So it's kind of a B flat, G minor, same thing, G minor seven, B flat six. We have this. Kind of a nice flavor there. to this lick one and we know that lick that's our classic ending lick but it's it could be used in the middle of a solo obviously as well basically it's a nice lead-in lick it leads us right to the G minor chord right to the root of it um, but be careful if you notice my fingering I ended how I would normally end one but instead we're gonna do that <laughs> with the triplet so it's kind of uh, deceiving because we think we're going to end right on G, but it doesn't. It goes to the above neighbor, then it does a triplet. And just visualize this shape, which is like G minor 7. And then get us to the 6th degree. Again, this is out of the Django vocabulary here. Um, so that lick there, connecting it, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Just practice that. This makes a great lick. Three, four, one. And I'm alternating everything, everything, alternating my picking if you want to watch it. Here we go. Three, four, one. That's a cool lick, that triplet lick. You're gonna like that. Keep working on that. But now we have to go back up the G minor six arpeggio. Triple it, triple it, trip. Triple it, triple it, three. Triple it, triple it, three. Da 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 da. And I'm going. I'm doing a, a roll, a rake here. This is not alternate picking. I started off down up, and then down down. So it's down up. And then rake down, down, down. Okay, so it's going down, up, down, 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 up, down. Okay, so let's try that whole phrase, including the pickup note, into that nice and slow. Get those triplets. One, two, three, four, one. Let's try that again. A one, two, three, four, one. Okay, great. Now we're on this D minor six, and we saw this last time I talked about this earlier. D minor six is equivalent to B minor seven flat five. Okay, same four notes. So I'm doing this arpeggio. B minor seven flat five. And then I slide it. I love the shape. You get some velocity. You know. And actually, what am I doing here? I'm going. So I'm actually staying in that position there. I, I sometimes practice it going forwards and backwards as I just demonstrated. With that little shift here, right here. B minor seven flat five, and then shift, D minor six. See how nice that is? And then you can add some slurs. And then once you're here, you could just stay in this position. So you're basically connecting this, B minor seven flat five, to D minor, you know, this thicking shapes. Now we're gonna scoot down a half step to the leading tone of the A7 chord, which is C sharp, and we're gonna do our little diminished run here. This is the diagonal arpeggio, but we're not just gonna do this. We're gonna kind of um, prolong it by doing this sequence. Okay, and then it kind of just builds up the suspense 
and it kind of delays it makes it a little bit lengthier which is nice too instead of just getting up to the destination quickly so one two three four <laughs> the solo there so but let's just finish it off with a little detail on the D minor so we we're on the third of the D minor D minor and just a little bit of rhythm there those are all in closure you know you have this D minor triad but we're going I'm not doing the whole arpeggio, but that's how you can practice it if you wanted to fancy it up. I'm just keeping it a little bit more simple. fun with those embellishments. I really recommend just spending a lot of time and mastering those and have fun. You don't necessarily have to be do the same way every time, but it's more just a concept of knowing D minor is this. And then apply those. You can add some slurs. Those are really sweet. Okay, so there you go. Thanks for watching this video today, y'all, and we'll see you next Five. time. Three. Mm. A7, D minor 6, A7, B flat 6, G minor 6, D minor 6, A7, D minor 6. Mm. course I'm just having fun getting rhythmic as, as well that's another big part of it it's just you know get that right here and just kind of be swinging on. think about rhythm is what I'm saying and you might just start off with those really simple Charleston rhythms See that just by connecting the inversions you could do chord melody style soloing pretty quickly pretty easily because all that I was using was diminished seven shapes and minor six okay. I just did the same thing down a half step so really I'll start on G B flat C sharp e, and then it resolves to D minor but in the style I like D minor six D minor 6. Here's D minor 7 to D minor 6. D minor 7. I love those little movements. Okay, D minor 7. That was the first eight bars to... In Dark Eyes, you see a B flat 6 chord. But what I wrote on my worksheet, if you have it in front of you, it's okay if you don't, I say G minor 7. B flat 6 equals G minor 7. Okay. So when I was playing through Dark Eyes earlier as a demonstration, 
even though I know that the chord says B flat major six on the chart and the band's playing B flat six, I'm thinking G minor seven, G minor seven, G minor seven, G minor seven. Then it goes to G minor six, it, like on the chart in the band. Back to D minor six. I guess I am going through this. And then A7, I'm doing our diminished trick. And then resolving it to D minor six. Then you get a lot of fun on this really great 16 bar song. We can jam on it probably for the whole lesson, but I know there's other stuff we need to talk about. So do think about that. And I, I am trying to...